Hi, we're out on the range today, so please bear with gunfire you hear in the background. Occasionally people ask me to recommend firearms, and that's very difficult to do when I don't know what range or training facilities someone has available to them, their budget, their local laws, the list goes on. And recently someone contacted me asking me to recommend handguns for beginners. Well, that adds the dimension of, it depends on how someone defines, beginner. There's a guy who considers himself quite an expert, and he likes to say to his detractors something to the effect of, well, unless you're a 13th level octagonal Imperial Grand Poobah shooter, then I guarantee I know more about guns and shooting than you do. Well, since I'm only an 11th level heptagonal Imperial Viceroy shooter, I guess he'd consider me a beginner. But if I got to define what I would call a beginner, I might use terms like, someone who's fired handguns on half a dozen occasions or less, someone who has very little to no formal education with handguns. And having worked with people like that on quite a few occasions, I wouldn't make any recommendations, but I can show you some of the handguns that I have found to be very useful training aids. Also, if you're going to purchase your first handgun in the near future, I wouldn't make any recommendations, but I can show you some handguns that I would call worthy of consideration. So with that in mind, let me show you my top five handguns for beginners. First on my list is the Ruger Bearcat Revolver. It's a single action revolver caliber 22 long rifle with a six shot cylinder, a four inch barrel, and a transfer bar safety. Now the way this revolver works is that the cylinder is locked, put it on half cock to free wheel the cylinder, then open the loading gate and load one round at a time of 22 long rifle ammunition. Close the loading gate and then lower the hammer. Even though it has a transfer bar safety, great care must be taken in lowering the hammer. What makes this a really good training aid is first that it's light and fairly small. So for someone of smaller stature or a kid, they can get a good grip on this. But it's not too small. I have an average to above average size hand, and I can still get a pretty good grip on it. Also because it's 22 long rifle, it doesn't have too much report, very little recoil, and the ammunition is inexpensive all of which are greatly conducive to good training for novices. And because it's single action, it forces the shooter to slow down just a little bit and put a little more thought into what they're doing. Again, conducive for training on sight alignment, sight picture, trigger control. And because it's a revolver, you can put some empty casings in there and do live versus dead round drills to work a little more on trigger control. So let's shoot it. Not bad. Next on my list is the Ruger Single 6, which is similar to the Bearcat, but there are some major differences as well. It is caliber 22 long rifle, it's a single action revolver with a six shot cylinder, and although mine has a nine inch barrel, significantly shorter barrels are available. Now some real differences between this and the Bearcat is first it's a much bigger revolver with a bigger grip. It also has much bigger high visibility adjustable sights. And even though it has the same transfer bar safety system, there's no half cock feature on this revolver. To free wheel the cylinder you just open the loading gate. And it's caliber 22 long rifle but a single six very typically will come with a second cylinder in caliber 22 Winchester Magnum rimfire. And that adds a dimension of usefulness to the revolver because 22 Magnum is just a lot more powerful than 22 long rifle. And for a demonstration on that we have a video where I shoot both out of this revolver. So let's shoot this one. Again, not bad at all. Next on my list is the Smith & Wesson Model 63. Now again, this is caliber 22 long rifle, and this one has a three inch barrel, and it's a fairly small handgun, but it is big enough that a full size adult can shoot it. However, this one is a double action revolver with a swing out eight shot cylinder. So although it can be fired in a single action mode for very precise shots, the double action configuration adds to the types of training you can do with it, and the swing out cylinder makes for much more convenient reloading. So let's shoot this one. And remember, although there's only five targets in this bank, this is an eight-shot revolver, 
And again, the swing out cylinder makes for much more convenient reloading. Up till now I've showed you some revolvers and that leads people to the erroneous conclusion that I'm some kind of revolver fanatic. No, that's Gun Sam that's the revolver affectionado. For me it's just a matter of pragmatism in that although negligent discharges can happen to anyone, they occur more often with new shooters than with old shooters and more often with auto loaders than with revolvers. So I find that revolvers are a good training aid for new shooters. However, some people consider them antiquated and some people just don't like revolvers and they want an auto loading pistol. And if that's the frame of mind you're in, there are some good ones out there. One of my favorites is the Ruger Mark III, which is an updated version of the Ruger Mark II, and it's got some different features. One of the most prominent ones being, instead of the magazine release on the butt of the pistol, it has what's called an American-style magazine release, a button at the back of the trigger guard. Now, this handgun is a full-size heavy handgun, but it has big, nice, high-visibility sights and an ergonomically designed grip that can help some people shoot really well. It also has a couple of features that help new shooters, such as on the manual safety, it's very clearly marked with an S or an F for safe or fire, and that kind of thing can help new shooters. Now on the subject of negligent discharges, negligent discharges happen primarily for one reason, negligence. But they manifest themselves in several different ways, and I want to show you two of those that in my experience are the most common with new shooters. Now one of them being, you put your magazine in, put a round in the chamber, put your safety on. Then you do whatever shooting you do and the time comes that you're going to unload the pistol and someone will take the magazine out and declare the pistol unloaded, forgetting that there's a round in the chamber. This has led to a lot of negligent discharges. Now another type that's a twist on the same kind of theme is that someone will remember the procedure of take the magazine out and take the round out of the chamber, but they get the order transposed. And what they end up doing is, with a magazine in, they will remember, take the round out of the chamber, then they will take the magazine out and declare the pistol to be unloaded, forgetting that since I took the round out while the magazine was still in, all I did was chamber another round. And now there's a round in this chamber, and they are thinking the pistol is unloaded. Many auto-loading pistols have built-in safety features to combat that, such as this one has a magazine safety. Even though there's a round in the chamber, the internal hammer is cocked, and the manual safety is disengaged, it will not fire unless the magazine is in. Also, this pistol has a nice big high visibility loaded chamber indicator. In fact, it has the words loaded chamber indicator stamped on it. And this will really help with this type of negligent discharge. However, although things like magazine safeties and loaded chamber indicators help, they do not take the place of knowing how to operate the pistol, and adherence to safety procedures. And if you are a new shooter, you must be aware that this type of problem exists, and you've got to make sure that you have your procedures down and pay attention to safety rules. If you're in the role of trainer, whether it's because you work at a range as a firearms trainer, or you're trying to teach your kids, or you're just an experienced shooter who's working with your less experienced friends, you've got to make sure that you remember this is a problem that manifests itself with new shooters, and you've got to train people on it and make sure people diligently follow safety procedures. Because although magazine safeties and loaded chamber indicators help, they are not foolproof, and nothing takes the place of making sure your brain and your trigger finger are working together properly. But all that having been said, let's shoot it. Accurate, practical, and a lot of fun. Up till now, every handgun I've shown you has been caliber 22 long rifle. Because of its relatively low price tag, its relatively low report and light recoil, it makes an outstanding training caliber. There's a couple of caveats that go with that, and I'll come back to those. But another thing is, when selecting a 22 pistol for a new shooter, you have to ask the question, where do you expect that person to transition to? Where do you expect them to go from starting out with a 22? Now let me give you an example. When I was a kid and I got my first 22 handgun, it was a double action revolver with a six shot swing out cylinder and a four inch barrel. 
Why? Because at that time, security personnel, armored car drivers, police officers, virtually everyone in the business was using a handgun that was caliber 38 special or 357 Magnum in a configuration that was double action revolver, six shot swing out cylinder with more or less a four inch barrel. And it was thought that that's what I would transition to. And that made sense. Well, today the concept is still the same, even though the guns have changed. And if you expect your new shooter with a 22 to transition to some kind of police or military type of firearm, there's a few types of 22 handguns that are really conducive to that. Let me show you a couple. One is this Smith & Wesson M&P 22. Now in terms of width, height, length, and features, this is virtually identical to the M&P that comes in calibers like 9 or 40. The magazine release, the slide release, the sights, the trigger pull, are virtually identical to the center fire version. The two main differences are this one is a little lighter than the center fire versions and for the 22 they they've added this ambidextrous manually operated safety. But either way this can be an outstanding training aid. Now in that same venue this is the Beretta M922. Again in terms of width, height, length, in terms of its trigger pull, its safety features, its disassembly and reassembly, and its weight it is virtually identical to the M9 or 92FS 9mm. Not only that, when you see handguns like the Ruger Mark III and this Smith & Wesson M&P 22 and many others, it's very typical that 22 auto-loading handguns have a 10-shot magazine. This Beretta has a 15-shot magazine, the exact same capacity as the 9mm version. And if you expect a shooter to transition to this type of firearm in its center fire capacity, this can be an outstanding training aid. Even if you don't expect the shooter to transition to the full-size versions of these, these are both still excellent 22 pistols. Let's shoot them. I'll go back 10 yards and I'll shoot the top target with the M&P and the bottom target with the M9. So to recap, we've got a Ruger Bearcat, small and user friendly. We've got a Ruger Single 6, a step up the chain. Our Smith & Wesson Model 63, double action with a swing out cylinder. Our Ruger Mark III auto loader. And our look-alike guns of the Smith & Wesson M&P 22 and the Beretta M922. Something I want to say about this particular category of firearms is that although these are made to simulate the center fire versions of these guns, this really is a Smith & Wesson, and this really is a Beretta. Not to be confused with other guns in this category, like this Chiapa, which is supposed to represent a 92FS, except that the weight isn't right, the grip isn't right, the sights and trigger pull aren't really right, and it's just a low-quality firearm that malfunctions a lot. In the category of this type of firearm, except no substitutes, get the real Smith & Wesson or the real Beretta. Now that brings me back to the caveat of 22 long rifle ammunition. I said that because of a low price tag, low report, and low recoil, 22 long rifle can be a really good training aid. And it can. However, I'm very well aware that buying a set of firearms just for practice and training, and another set of firearms for concealed carry or home defense, is a luxury a lot of people can't afford. What I'm showing you here for a lot of people represents the ideal rather than the real. Some people just have to go with one gun. Also, starting out with a 22 might not be as macho as starting out with a 40 or a 45, but for a lot of us it will in the long run make you a better handgun shooter. So as always, don't try this at home on what you call a professional, and thanks for watching the top 5 guns for beginners video.